indeed. Safety car is pulling in ahead of this rolling start for a 20 minute race for the RLM Racing Bike Sports Championship. It's the red uh, and white car predominantly of Scott Mattel on the right hand side of your picture. It's the black and silver car with the, uh, the yellow and uh, red livery on the front of Joe Stables. He's on pole position and Steve Bell in the number 86 white and red Saber as the lights go out and the race gets underway. It's uh, Mattel who just about gets his nose in front then as they head down towards the first corner. But no, it's Joe Stables that's going to turn into Clervo Corner in first position. One of them running a little bit wide there in the background. That's the uh, number 17 car of uh, Ross Drew, I think, that was, uh, that was going wide. And already, Josh, as we were saying, the top two starting to pull away from the rest. And Scott Mattel's got a great run out of the chicane, heading down towards Tower Corner. He's trying to pull alongside Joe Stables for the lead here, and he can't quite manage it. Stables late on the brakes. Stephen Bell's held on to third. Up to fourth, it's come uh, Leon Morrell. Then the Class B car made a good start to the race, but Stephen Bell did a good job there to hang on to third place as they speed off down towards the Jim Clark S's. These cars are super rapid, aren't they, around this cross circuit. They're already... Um, round the back, round the committed section of the track and for fifth, Alistair Smart's under a bit of pressure there from Ross Drew, he was another quick starter from eighth and he's going for fifth up the inside there wasn't really room for that, he muscles his way alongside, he can't quite make it through though. No he can't, it was uh, optimistic I would suggest that one to try and make the move into Sunny but he's gone through, the two leaders though already heading through the complex, this is the fight for third and fourth position and it features that Sabre Scala of, uh, of Steve Bell and also the class leading Leon Morrell uh, Radical to classes, class A for tuned engines, class B for production based engines, there is another class as well but we don't need to worry about that this weekend so the leading cars going over the line at the end of lap one and it was Scott Mittell, uh, so it was Joe Stables that was ahead by uh, half a second. Indeed, 80 seconds from the rolling lap as well, super quick, 88 there, that's the second of the Mattel, that's Richard Wise in the um, MC41R, the car you would have seen Scott Mattel race last season, it's a new car that Mattel is in for 2021, so Richard uh, Wise, who's been a front runner in bike sports in the past, coming back this year in that Mattel, uh, he was a championship contender, wasn't he? Uh, what, at the beginning of the last decade? Just wondering, were we going to get a change for position there? Is that, I think it was, I think uh, Andrew Kimpton briefly was ahead of Richard Wise. I think Wise uh, managed to hold on to seventh place just in the back of shot there. So, oh, and a retirement, that's the 57 car of Brian Well, it's not going to be a retirement, actually, he's going to get back onto the circuit. That's at the exit of Tower Corner. There you can see Ross Drew all over the back of Alistair Smart, that's for fifth position, but he's on the grass, that's not a good line is it? Uh, for, oh no, it's been in the background, that is Kimpton this time, he's gone around then on the exit of Sunny, so you saw a mistake initially from Ross Drew, but it was a spin for Andrew Kimpton in the Radical PR6, coming out of Sunny on the second lap of this motor race. Leon Morrell now with Alistair Smart behind him in the uh, number 73 car. Leon Morrell, a relative newcomer uh, to circuit racing, just uh, started last season. He's in the North Motorsport car, did a couple of events uh, last year, but he's really got the bug. He's under a bit of pressure here, though, from Alistair Smart in the number 73 car. You see on screen now the time and tower with the different colours denoting the different classes. So you'll see that Leon Morrell's nearest class rival is Ross Drew who's uh, two places behind him on track. And there is Morrell on the circuit with Alistair Smart behind him to the Radical SR3 being chased by the PR6, the PR6, the centre seat car uh, that Smart is in. Remember, he qualified fourth, so he should have more pace here than Morrell. There's a car coming to the pits, by the way. That it, is... It's Kimpton, yeah. Yeah, you know, after his spin earlier, Smart there trying to get alongside uh, Morrell. Couldn't quite do it. We thought this kind of battle uh, at Donington Park at the opening round. We thought Morrell would be quick off the line. He uh, was again and Alistair Smart all over the back of him. Uh, Mike Chen, the Class B Championship leader, not here this weekend. Matt Moore, second in the Championship, he's third in the class behind uh, Morrell and Drew, who uh, were the two winners at Donington Park um, on Easter Monday in much, much colder conditions. There's a look at the leaders. There was four tenths between them at the end of the previous lap. It's gone out a little bit, just over half a second now between number 95, Joe Stables, and number 27, uh, Scott Mittell, Mittell a former low-cost champion, of course, he's also raced in, uh, in RGB in the past, but he's up against Joe Stables here, who's the champion 
in 2019 and 2018, Josh. Yes, yeah, both those seasons, he was a Class B driver, yeah. wasn't he? With not terribly much competition, but he was doing great jobs getting overall victories uh, in what was an SR3 radical. He's now in his dad's car, Richard Stables, who won the championship in this car back in 2010 and 2011. Uh, and it's great to see him able to run right at the front here under a lot of pressure from Scott Mattel. We saw this kind of battle at Donington Park as well. Uh, Mattel came strong there, I remember, in the second half of races. It'll be interesting to see if that uh, repeats. We've got a 20-minute race for the Bike Sports Championship. They're in the 118s early on in the race. 1 minute 18.14 for Scott Mattel. Obviously, a lap record because these cars have not raced on the cross-circuit before. They're already 15 seconds ahead of the rest, which should still be Stephen Berlin's third place in that Tim Gray Motorsport run Saber but he's uh, that's the Kimpton car that come through next so he's come back out the pit you can see how big the gap is back to third there he is Stephen Bell is still there here ahead of Lynn Morrell he's got a group of cars behind him now with Alistair Smart uh, Ross Drew and Richard White making a four car battle coming to the end of lap number four so it's really pan exactly as we thought we've got the two cars out there together very close formation then there's pretty good battles between everyone else <laughs> absolutely so they stream across the line that fourth place battle you see the two tuned engine cars quicker in a straight line so that's smart catching morale and wise catching drew as they turn into clairvaux neither of those moves are on crop not the easiest of circuits to overtake on particularly in these cars which have downforce and carry so much speed through the corners so here they come out of the chicane onto the back straight towards tower corner they go and that's the 73 car of alistair smart 17 uh, ross drew behind him shares the car with his brother uh, miles switched to an RSX for, for last year that had a road legal uh, SR3 before that did the brothers from, uh, from the East Midlands uh, I think they are just spotted we've got Ian Charles's car pulled off on the exit of Tower Corner after half a lap of the race so we did lose one car early on yeah so there's 13 still circulating obviously we lost Charles Hall after qualifying um, a shame that in a way not more haven't made it because I'm sure they'll enjoy a fantastic race around this uh, this uh, Croft circuit as we say a great driver's track as we watch this group of cars from third backwards. Steve Bell just trying to put a bit of daylight between himself and Leon Morel and the rest, but it's only about a second and a half that he's managed to build up so far. But this is massive progress on uh, Donington Park, isn't it, when they were there last month. Stephen Bell, I don't think, finished inside the top ten even there, so it's great to see uh, how much progress they've made in such little time. As a smart this time, it's down the inside of Leon Morel and makes it work into Clairvaux corner. So now he's into fourth. Can he catch Stephen Bertle, who is one and a half seconds up the road? And this uh, could allow, Ro allow Ross Drew to go after his class rival, uh, Leon Morell, although there is a bit of a gap between them. Up front, Scott Mattel is set to another fastest lap of the race, a one minute 18 dead. But this is about a second off of qualifying time this morning. But of course, a very warm day. Uh, it was cooler when they were out on uh, track at half past nine this morning. Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, also warmer than it would have been during the course of testing over the over the last day or two as well. The leaders, I can tell you, are right together again as we're watching the 17 car of Ross Drew then. Behind him is number 8K Richard Wise in different classes. And it's worth pointing out, as far as the championship is concerned, points are scored within the individual classes and number 17 goes for a spin. So Ross Drew, who had a couple of exciting moments at Sunny already during the course of this race, spins the car around pretty harmlessly in the end. He loses a place though, might lose a couple because 26 Mark Boots got for actually Mark Boots has also got ahead of Matt Moore then already on this lap as well. We deduce from that. And Matt Moore is battling uh, with Drew in Class B, so actually quite important that he came out in front of Moore there. You just saw through your shot, Alistair Smart has caught Stephen Bell already. So that's one and a half seconds caught in the space of a lap. So Alistair Smart is pretty rapid here to get onto the back of the Sabre as they turn their way through Clairvaux. It was a 121.4 for Smart, which uh, is a second quicker than Bell has done all race long. They're almost half a minute behind the top two. We're not quite halfway through the race as the leaders head the, uh, the third race battle even head their way down towards Tower Bend. A bit of a curve, isn't there, down the straight as they now break down into the right-hander. Interesting, the Sable with that really low rear wing that we heard uh, Stephen talk about ahead of the race compared to the much higher rear wing on the Radical PR6. A car that's been around for a long, long time now. One of the earlier creations from Radical Sports Cars up in, or down from here in Peterborough. Uh, as they turn now right through Sunny, they're absolutely together for third place, Ian. 
that's so good, this battle. The leader still together as well, by the way, and they're catching traffic. Brian Murphy about to be caught, but is Alistair Smart about to make an attack on the Sabre Scala of Steve Bell as they come into the complex behind our commentary box window here? Uh, the answer to that question is not quite yet. There's then the harsh braking area for the hairpin, the last corner on the lap, and it was Smart that went to the right-hand side of the circuit there as they went through that corner. He's in the toe now of Steve Bell as they head along the start and finish straight towards Clervo Corner. This is to start lap number eight. I don't think, though, that Smart is close enough to make use of that toe down the straight into Clervo and Hawthorne at the beginning of the lap. You'd think the low rear wing on the Sabre as well might make that a bit uh, quicker through the, uh, down the straight, go through the air a bit better, you would imagine, uh, compared to the Radical PR6, although that is a slippery car. So they go down towards tower again, not much separates them in a straight line. What can Smart do under the brakes? Well, Bell defends well here to hang on to third place. I'm sure he's very keen to try and pick up a podium if he can, but the PR6 Radical tries to drop alongside down towards the Jim Clark Esses. You're committed through here. <laughs> if you're side by side, you'd have to be extra committed, and Alistair Smart thought better of that. They turn their way on to Barcroft, then and down towards Sunny, and this is bringing Leon Morrell back into the battle to make it three cards. Can we see Richard White in the metallic? make it four we may well do because he's quicker than all three of them yeah i think he's uh, almost there isn't he so as we are now uh, approaching well we are at half distance in this race it's 95 joe stables leading 27 scott mittel they're both a long way clear of the rest as it was a spin for alistair smart there a spin oh he was doing so well to put the pressure there on steve bell for third position but he just seemed to take an odd line there into the complex and end up perhaps just getting a bit wide on the marbles and now Leon Morel as we watch out of our window is under pressure from as you can see on screen now the number 88 car of Richard Wise the Mittel the black and orange car is ahead I think by the time they turn into the corner it is a class A car it does have a tuned engine so all change in that it's now going to be uh, Richard Wise up into fourth place and Wise is about a second quicker than Stephen Bell as well he's got a couple of so seconds to catch but Richard Wise might have the pace uh, to put Stephen Bell under so, some more pressure, but he dealt with the pressure from Smartwell, and obviously we saw the spin from Alistair Smart that dropped him down to at least seventh position. It's side by side behind him. Uh, they come on into shot now, so you can see Smart in front of the Class B battle for second position, which Matt Moore goes round the outside to get himself ahead of Ross Drew, who we saw spin a couple of laps ago. Absolutely. So really good race this for the RLM Racing Bike Sports Championship. It's by far the, not the biggest grid we've got this weekend, but the racing is certainly not disappointing. There is the number 20 car of Matt Moore. Currently, he is just ahead of Ross Drew, so he's second place within Class B, which is being led at the moment by, by Leon Morrell, Andrew Gordon, Brian Murphy are the other Class B drivers that are entered here this weekend at Croft Circuit. As we've got now roughly eight minutes of the race left to go. 20 minute race around the Croft circuit and there is the man that's still in third position in the Sabre Scarlet, Steve Bell. And he's looking a bit more comfortable now with Richard Wise's nearest opposition. Indeed, but is Wise catching? And well on that lap, no, because Stephen Bell has just gone a second quicker than he's done all race without the pressure. He's done a 121.39, uh, which isn't quite as quick as he went in qualifying, but nobody else is. Uh, and that means he's keeping that two or so seconds margin over Richard Wise. So that uh, remains as it is. We've had nine laps of this race. There will be a, quite a few more to go. There's 10 laps about to be completed. On your screen, you can see Joe Stables crossing the line ahead of Scott Mattel. They're still running the 118s as they have been all race long. Uh, there's seven tenths of a second then between these two. And as it has pretty much been all race long, they've got some more traffic to deal with though before the end. They turn their way through the chicane right on the limit. Joe Stable just puts a, a tyre on the grass there, was slightly wide, but it wasn't too bad uh, for him in the end. So Scott Mattel wasn't able to catalyse from that. And uh, really interesting to see and how these two cars are so equally matched. They, well, they were designed really in different decades, weren't yep. they? The Radical PR6 and the Mattel of MC41RR. The Radical built by a big sports car manufacturer, the Mattel really uh, designed by father and son. And there's just like, nothing that can separate them in this Bike Sports Championship at, um, at Donington Park or at Croft this weekend. It certainly seems that way. And it's a great story, isn't it? The, the Mattel story and how they've over the last, getting on for a decade now, I suppose, themselves been developing the cars that initially ran 
in RGB Sports 1000 as that become a, and latterly built in cars to a bike sport specification as well and uh, developing all the time uh, this running a 1340cc RLM uh, prepared engine the two leaders go across the line again to complete their 11th lap now the gap between them just about six tenths of a second it's only been between I think about four and eight tenths all the way through this race so far so really close between the two leading drivers 11 laps now being completed I'm afraid what's on your timing tab is now a little bit out of up as I say that it's bang up to date again uh, with the six tenths of a second gap showing on screen between Joe Stables number 95 and Scott, Scott Mattel 27 and they lap a car that keeps well clear Andrew Gord who's running 11th he started 15th he's going a second quicker than he did in qualifying so Andrew Gord may be a lap down but he's having a good run here to be ahead of Brian Murphy who's a uh, an experienced radical racer. We don't see him out in bike sports that often. We usually see him at the Burkitt and successful there. So Brian Murphy perhaps just struggling a little bit with his cross circuit. Uh, Alistair Smart, I can see in the number 73 car, is back ahead of Mark Boot, number 26. As, as 27 there, that Scott Mattel was a little bit ragged. That was uh, coming out of Sunny. He just kicked him a bit of dust on the exit of the circuit and has lost him one or two tenths. But yeah, as I was saying, Alistair Smart, 73, back up to sixth ov overall and fifth in Class A at the expense of Mark Boot after that uh, spin he had at a complex uh, of laps ago. Notice Doug Carter's got himself ahead of Ross Drew. So Drew, who started the race so well, has dropped down to 10th position, unfortunately for him. I wonder if that group are going to be caught by the leaders before the end. There are five, uh, there's what, well, four minutes to go. So what, three or so laps, possibly yeah. not them, which I suspect they're quite glad about. Although Joe Stable, for the first time in this race, has a one second advantage yeah. over Mattel. They blast their way down towards Tower Corner, hard on the brakes here, as they then turn right uh, through tower so to put these lap times in perspective the one minute 18 uh, both of them have done the overall lap record is Sergio Perez one minute 13.6 that's a Dallara Formula 3 car uh, Formula Renault did a 116 Formula Palmer Audi a 117 cars that are still racing uh, Formula 4 and Porsche Carrera Cup they'll both be here later in the year are in the 119s in qualifying spec mm -hmm. and we're going in race spec on a hot day one and a half seconds faster than that yeah and uh, that, that shows you what fantastic pace this they said but also value for money as well because if you're racing in Formula 4 or Porsche Carrera <laughs> Cup you are spending a lot more money than you'll be spending uh, doing the RLM Racing Bike Sports Championship I'm sure so through to complete another lap come the leaders then and they are just going through your shot uh, now and it's still roughly a similar leader I would think for, for Joe Stables around about a second. They are going to catch Ross Drew whose mm. pace has gone well off from earlier on after a couple of errors. So lapping somebody that's going much quicker than anybody else they've passed so far oh. although... Scott Mattel very wide there at Hawthorne wasn't he and he made that mistake a lap and a half ago up at Sunny so I wonder if there's a problem with the handling of that car um, I suspect now with only a couple of minutes to go uh, the leader stables is too far distant he might just uh, if he can opt to bring it home now yes oh and problems for Stephen Ball I'm afraid the third place driver is off the circuit and he is out of the race by the looks of it it's sunny i think that is ian yeah, it a, is. a real shame he was in third place he was one and a half seconds ahead of richard wise and what's gone wrong it's been such a good uh, weekend for that car up to now it's been going all so well it's been getting quicker and quicker throughout the weekend uh, tim gray shook the car down on thursday went very quickly in it not far away from the race pace today at the right at the sharp end and uh, stephen bell as he, as he mentioned earlier been getting more confident with the car and been running third all race long but with just a couple of laps to go it's come to an end let's hope that car can be sorted for the race later on today yeah actually it's a double header for the bike sports this weekend so another race to come later on 17 minutes gone so there's actually going to be three more laps to go i think for uh, joe staples he's completed uh, 14 laps, so it should be a 17 lap race i think it's two laps to go uh, the time tower just updated uh, now yeah. to 18 minutes so yeah i think two more laps for the leaders uh, but it's a big lead now it's nearly five seconds from joe stables to scott mattel then uh, and then they're well well ahead of the rest so they've lapped the ninth place card that is for ross drew don't think they will catch Doug Carter, who's 
in eighth position. Uh, another stalwart of the uh, Bike Sports Championship. He's been racing that car for uh, a long old time now. Good to see he's made his trip up to Croft the first time this championship has been here. So here's that Mattel then. A prime example. The 750 Motor Club is all about here. Building your own car, designing your own car and bringing it racing and being successful with it. Yeah, absolutely. Into the pits has come 44 again. So that's Andrew Kimpton. He'd already been into the pits once during the course of this race. So it's going to be the last finisher anyway. But now he may not be classified as he's come into the pit lane. There's Scott Mittell uh, going through your shot in second position. Five seconds or so behind uh, Joe Stables, who's in the lead of the race. And he does now get the last lap board. So one lap to go in this RLM Racing Bike Sports Championship race. And Joe Stables looking good here, Josh, to make it three wins from three. Yeah, the one thing that could change towards the end is the battle for third, fourth and fifth because the, the uh, recovering Alistair Smart is catching Liam Morrell and Richard Wise. Uh, and they've still got to go on to their last lap. So that uh, could well be a potential change right at the end here. But we're keeping an eye on that. But for now, we're watch the race leader because we haven't seen much of him, Joe Stables. He didn't get pole at, uh, at Donington, but he converted both of those into victories. He didn't race that much last year, but as you said, he was a 2018 and 2019 champion. And the Stables family have been with the 750 Mode Club for a very long time. Have indeed. Uh, I guess a concern here, though, for his rival, Scott Mittal, because his pace has dropped right off towards the end. Is this a big problem, we wonder, that he and his dad and the team will have to sort out before the second race late on. But there's Joe Stables heading into the complex for the final time twice a champion then already in uh, in bike sports uh, possibly looking to make it uh, three wins in four seasons this year out of the final corner he has come up to the checkered flag he will go and the checkered flag goes out now to joe stables who makes it three wins from three this season in the rlm racing bike sports championship scott Mattel yeah thanks very much ian joe stables has uh, just pulled in now he's just catching his breath after what was a uh, a very hot and hard 20 minutes work. Joe, do you want to just uh, wander over here so we can have a word with you? And uh, we'll hopefully get a chance to speak to our race winner. Of course, they've always got so much to talk about when they come in after. There we go, Joe. If you wander over here, got your winner's garland for you. Well done, mate. Uh, Joe, uh, hard work out there, I'd imagine. I mean, Scott was never going to let you have that one easy, was he? No, he was with me for quite a bit, and he kept me worried for a lot of the race. And uh, it was very tiring, very tiring, especially since... Both my mirrors caved in as well, so I had to push one out. <laughs> That's not ideal because all of the action in that race was happening right behind you, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, exactly, exactly, yeah. So that got me a bit worried. <laughs> uh, hard work out there in this heat as well. How hard are the tyres worked out there, especially with this new service? Oh, they're horrible. They dropped off to about four laps probably. They just, they just lost all the grip. Uh, but you luckily were able to manage it. And actually, it was Scott that made the first couple of mistakes. Did you see the moment that he had out at Sunny? No, I didn't see what happened, actually. Just a wheel on the grass, but I think that allowed you to break away by a second or so. All right, nice one, nice one. Another race later on today, another win? Yeah, going for it. That's the plan. I like the confidence, Joe. Well done, congratulations on the victory. Joe Stables then, our first winner of the weekend. Uh, next out on track, though, something completely different. It's the Tagiwa Type R Trophy, our second race of the day, coming up shortly.